Sweet Jesus, take the preeminence. Take over this service. In Jesus' name, amen. How many of you have a copy of our manual for 2022? Today I'm talking from the chapter 16, page 245 to page 265 of this book. Stages of Sonship. I've preached it before. I've said it before. I was listening to my own preaching. As I was listening to I have a device that reads the book for me. So it was reading for me and I realized that, wow, what a message. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 22. From verse 1. Tonight. It's a long time I read a long verse of scripture. But let's do that today. I always read a short one and we go away. Now it came to pass after this thing that God tested Abraham's sons and daughters helped their father to fulfill their assignment. They don't compete. But let's go. Now it came to pass after this thing God tested Abraham and said to Abraham, and he said, here I am to he said, take now your son, not a church member, not your servant, not your disciple, not your friend, not your neighbor. Take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom thou, whom you love, and go to the land of Morah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains for which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him. I, know, I like this one. Took two of his young men with him. And with him and Isaac his son. Know the difference. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place for which God had told him. And then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Now he has seen what God wants him to do. He has seen the vision. And Abraham said to the young men, stay here with the donkey. Your journey is over. Me, the lad, he didn't call him son again. He called him a lad. He didn't say my son again. He called him a lot. A young, the, the Hebrew would tell you, a young, strong, and energetic person. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. That was prophetic or a lie. So Abraham took the wood of the bent offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. So you see, Abraham was not referring to the boy as his son. Is the writer who was kept telling that that is his son. Because at this stage, it is Isaac who is going to prove his sonship. So, laid it on his, Isaac his son and took the fire in his arm and knife and the two of them went together. Verse 7. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. Now, know the word, my father. And he said, Here I am, I am my son. Then he said, Look! I can see the fire in the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering <laughs> and Abraham said my son God will provide for himself a lamb for a burnt offering the two of them went together verse 9 then we can go in then they came to the place for which God told him and Abraham built an altar that and placed the wood in order and he bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. He bound Isaac, his son. Please, I hope CNN is not there to capture this. I hope BBC and Peace FM, Multimedia Group, especially Al Jazeera, I hope they are not there to capture this 
because this is deadly. I've realized that people want greatness. People want success. But don't want to be qualified for it. You know, many people wish that there was nothing like school. And that you go to school, that you become a doctor. So that you kill us. You won't go to school to become a lawyer. Then you, you, you do what? Do you know that the, the case is, that is why pastoring is a sensitive area like medicine. Most of the areas of life that is delicate and is life threatening, they do exams almost every year. There are some things you've learned in school like architecture and co- you might be there, you might not have to go and do real right exams most often. But medicine, you must renew your license almost every year. And the reason why even architects and civil engineers also sometimes have to renew their license also is uh, right exams is because new things are developed every day and every now and then and you need to upgrade yourself so that you don't kill people. And one of the most sensitive areas of God is life or the sensitive the most sensitive thing treasure of god is human life now if god is then handing human life to someone like a pastor to manage it means that a pastor should not be uninformed a pastor should be abreast with knowledge and a pastor should not have yesterday's bread a pastor should have the current bread that is why if you read uh, your Bible or our Bible, you know that when the Jews were walking through the wilderness, when the Jews were walking through the wilderness, you see that they had to put in the ark of the testimony fresh bread every morning. Fresh bread every morning. Because you couldn't use yesterday's bread to minister in his presence. And the priest ate the yesterday's bread, but the bread must always be fresh in his presence. Now, I'm sure if you've read this book on this stage of sonship and you are listening to what I'm teaching today, you will see that there's a lot of things I would say which was not in the book because there are more fresh revelations that come as I listen to even God's word. Please, are, are you with me here? So when you are a man of God and you are not fresh, if I say fresh, I don't mean pomade fresh or dressing fresh. I was telling somebody that this trousers I'm wearing is well almost 11, 12 years old. It doesn't look it. Yeah. <laughs> That's why it is, the bus is very big. In those days, that was the trend. I think I, I bought some, Pastor Charles did, bought some for his wedding. Yeah. So how old is your marriage? Eh? 11 years this year. So it was after I bought that you bought. So this one is 12 years. The suit is still there. <laughs> one of the ways not to be poor is to learn how to keep your dress. Because it will, it will pass, but it will come again. <laughs> and I don't sleep in my dresses. When I finish, I remove them and hang them. So that, and I don't wash them often. So I don't make them dirty to be washed. That's one of the ways to keep your dresses. Now let's go. So, can I continue? The bread must be fresh. So, a man of God who doesn't go, or a father who doesn't go often to God's presence, often will become redundant in life. Will not know what is happening. Will not know what is trendy. And God's trendy is every day. That is why his mercies become new every morning. Am I teaching someone here? You are not here. Are you here? You've gone home. Now, so in moving on, and this freshness I'm talking about, you realize that God intentionally said in the book of Jeremiah, that I'll give you pastors after my own heart who will feed you. Because if the people are fed, they also become new. The newness of a church, the freshness of a church, is based on the freshness of their pastor. 
Now, it will shock you that if you are at home and your father is poor, you are poor. Is it true? It's not true. If your father's finances are going bad, your fees will not be paid. It, it affects your eating at home. You, you become more nourished. The kind of vehicle you take to school, it affects the whole home. And especially if men don't have money, I don't know where this thing came from. We become extra angry at anything. It's not true. I mean, we become angry at anything. And, and if you see things that are getting spoiled, you never, if you have money, you don't come blurry. We reduce the milo. We reduce the milo. So you mean the milk is finished? Have you asked for the price of rice lately? Please, this is how we've been eating every day. If your income is not coming, don't blame us. Tell us to reduce our eating. Because things are, but don't come to say that it's finished. It has always been finished within one week. But now you are noticing because you don't have money. I think I'm not teaching here well. <laughs> so when a father can't provide, it affects his everything. Actually, it affects his manhood. I see some of them. Men say, Just like women, when they see money, the anointing comes and they feel loved. Men, to when the men are deprived of money, it's like everything is not functioning. They might function, but not function well. What's the pressure now? Now, if your Bible, Proverbs says that train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. That is to say that. The way a man of God or a father develops the child from childhood will show in his age of maturity. And the funny thing is that some of this I'm saying now, they are not yet in this book. I always say that I keep things. But I've said some of these things before. It will shock you that when a child is between zero or one month to like six, seven years, or let's say jump to 18, I call it the age of the seed. It's like when you plant a seed under the ground. It's only the one who planted the seed that knows what is under the ground. After 18 years to around 30, 35, it becomes like a tree. Now somebody can say, this is a mango tree. This is a guava tree. This is a papaw. This is a dim tree. But we don't know whether it's going to be sweet or bitter till from 35 years going. That is why people now begin to pluck that tree and then we get to know that, ah! So you see somebody, it will come in the news that he has beaten his wife and the wife is dead. He say a demon came on him. It's not a demon. From childhood, there's something he has been doing. Anything he wants, he must have. If he doesn't have, he will beat you. And the parents said nothing about it. So this person grows up and feels like I own everything because in growing up, they own everything. Most of people become thieves in school. Rich people still become thieves in school. It's because anything they had at home, they were given. So when they get to school, they see somebody's store, it's mine, I must take it. If you don't give it to me, I'll beat you. It's not true. Because that is, why, that is why God being our father, it is not everything we ask him for that he gives to us. Wait, that's, who here, every prayer you pray to God, he has answered all. Let me see your hands up. All. He has not left. Okay, you are very sincere people. Give the Lord a mighty clap of him. That's a good father. He will not answer you all. And the reason why he will not answer you in all is because if he answers you all, there are things you will never learn on your own. So, hey, can I teach? Are you aggressive or you are quiet or you are wondering what I'm going to say? <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> we, will, we will sail very soon. So, if you look at um, um, life technique, I realize that most children end up becoming who they watched in the head. 
Show me who you listen to, who you observe. So the wise man in the book of Proverbs said, My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. So it's not even enough when you say, that I'm listening to the man of God on YouTube. Or I'm listening to my father on Facebook. I listen. And you don't come close to enough to observe how the person lives. Because if you don't, people who observe learn than those who just listen. You see, when I'm having meetings with people, I like to do it face to face because I just don't want you to, let's say you are behind the phone. Yeah, hello? Yes, I'm listening. I want to see your facial expression when I said you were a fool. I want, I want to see your body language because it's a language. Are you sure you are not here? You see, if it's the phone, what happens is that the person is just sharing you, but you are not, the person says, yes, sir. Yes, please, I understand. But if you, you, are, you are with the person, you know that even though you say yes, the face doesn't look like it's a yes of I've accepted, but okay, go on. Yes, yes, sir. 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 Then sometimes the phone is speak on the speaker. Keep talking. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the wise man said, my son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe. You can listen to somebody for years and somebody will be listening and observing for days. The one who is listening and observing will go far than the one who is just listening. Can we move on? So, I don't speak Chinese because I've never stayed in China. Do you speak Chinese? You speak? You speak? Can I give you a microphone to do translations more? Can you give you a microphone? I want to feel China. Let me ask you, are you a Ghanaian? But how can we speak Chinese? You schooled there. How many years? Three years. So staying in China for three years has influenced his DNA. So let me tell you, you can be born useless, but the association you keep can change your DNA. What did I say? Give him the microphone. I don't think you can't This why we are going to put it on TikTok. If you don't know, I don't say it well. What? Chung Wei, Yidian Dian. We can hear you. Eh? Give him that. Let him hold the microphone. Chung Wei, Yidian Dian. Short like that. I said the association you keep. No matter how foolish you are, can change your DNA. Uh -huh. Timbo don. Uh, that's all. Timbo don. Timbo don. <laughs> it's not true. I don't understand this. Timbo don means I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> it means you can't translate the deep, deep ones. But if they speak, you can hear. But you can't. Do you, did you make China friends? How many of them? Quite a lot. Did you stay with them? I stayed with them. I worked with them. You worked with them? Yeah. And you can't speak? I can speak a little. A little. But when I go too deep? I, I can't. Uh -huh. <laughs> I've stayed in Accra for the greater part of my life. That is a gallant. Me too, I can speak some small gun. But there's no gun you speak, I don't understand. But somebody can speak, can be in Accra for just one year and can speak gun as if he's always been a gun person. 
The difference is their commitment to it that I want to make a difference in this area. I don't think you will clap. I know. Should I continue? Are you sure? So if, if you look at life critically, you see that one of the things I believe in is I believe in the word that I call engraftment. You see, God did not come to build a church. God came to build a kingdom. Now, when God instituted Adam and Eve in the garden, he didn't come to build a religion of association. He came to build a family. That's why when Jesus came, he started referring to God as father, not as king. Because God is a father. He wants a family. That's why God instituted marriage. Because God wants a family. What does God, God want? Family. So, church is now God's family. So, it's like God gave birth to a lot of children, right? And when he gave birth to a lot of children, some of them decided not to like God again. So, God said, okay, now I'm coming to the earth. I'm looking for my children. Anybody who wants to behave in this way and that way, I'll call that person my child. Is that, is that clear? Oh, I, okay. Let me give you an example. Maybe you won't understand. How many of you here are Ghanaians? If American ambassador comes here and says that all of those who want to become Americans stay here after church, they will give you American citizenship. How many of you still become Ghanaians? How many of you don't mind doing dual citizenship? Dual. Isn't it true that a lot of us are dual Christians? <laughs> now, if you have to, if you have to join the association of the Americans, let me tell you this. Last year I was teaching it. One of the first things they do to you when you you get into their system is to change your language. Now, I'm a black man, but if I'm working in America and uh, why the police will stop me and I start speaking their, way, their language, they will think I'm an American. I, is it true? It's not true. Yeah, those, that's why in America, it's easy for blacks to hide there than in UK. So when you start speaking like they speak, they will think that, oh, you are an American. So yesterday I was listening to something on TikTok and they said, don't say Joss, say hush. So they asked the person, where are you going? Instead of saying, I forgot it. Instead of saying that June, how long will you say? Instead of saying June to July, you say January, June, say, January. Huh? Instead of saying June, say, huh? July, July. Why? Because the man who was teaching the language said, you don't say like J or S, you don't say J, you say us. So he assumed that us, everything with J is us. So he kept going, us, Anuari, Ajuan, Ajuan. When he was on your citizen, straight. <laughs> Look at us, are you a citizen? Now, so there are things in this world that will require you having a particular DNA in order for you to have. That is the reason for fatherhood. Because fatherhood simply means somebody who is my source. Someone that I can depend upon. I've said this, that there's nothing like ex-father, an ex-daughter, there's ex-wife, ex-girlfriend, ex-boyfriend. Is it true or is it not true? But when it comes to family, there's nothing like ex. But interesting, when it comes to God, there is nothing like ex-wife, ex-husband. I think I'm not teaching well here. So Uriah will always be referred to as the husband of 
Bathsheba. Nabal will always be referred to as what? Abigail's what? Why? Because God believes in the family system. Please, are you with me? Oh, please, are you with me? Yes. So, can I continue? Now, so, anything you want to be, you can only be that by picking up the things D and A. Please, what is D and A? Science for no a DNA is saying. Somebody in there said Digital National Association. <laughs> I've taught you this before that when God had to make Adam, Satan got angry with God and did the coup. Because we've been serving you all along. You never, even when I said I want to be like you, you were angry. But here you were, you create Adam. And you said, I've created Adam in what? In my image and my likeness. Because until Adam had the image and the likeness, Adam never had dominion. Are you with me? And when God made Adam, he never thought of making anything again. Why? Because out of Adam, Eve will come. Out of Eve, Cain and Abel will come. Out of it, the whole world will have children. Is it, is it true or whatever? So, a person who picks a DNA automatically has everything he or she needs to make it in life. That is why when Satan came on earth, the thing he wanted to destroy was Adam's DNA. He wanted to break the sonship or the relationship between the father and his children. Are you with me? Most people who never made it in life when you were about, when the Satan saw how you were going to make it, no, he said, either father die or mother die. Or father becomes useless or mother becomes useless. Because when, even with Jesus, Jesus nearly lived without a father. And stop telling me that I have father in heaven, I don't need father on earth. If you don't need father on earth, like you should just be born. We are there, no, then you appear, boom, then you are born. When even Joseph was not a biological father of Jesus, the Bible said in the night, God had to visit Joseph by night in a dream and literally beg the man, take this woman as your wife, even though the child she's bearing is not yours, and be a father over him so that he can have the name Judah. Why? Because they needed a particular DNA. The son of God must be born from the tribe of Judah. If he's not coming from the tribe of Judah, he cannot be a Messiah. And Mary, it, DNA is not picked from a mother. Well, now they can pick it. But DNA is picked from what? A father's bloodline. Do you know that it is believed that if you do this, if you have sex with a woman and she gets pregnant and abort, they can check your system and can find the DNA in you. For you just becoming pregnant. I know you are laughing. Go and check it. Go and do your research. And if I'm lying, come and show it to me that I'm lying. For having sex with the woman and she goes to abort, they will check her system and your DNA is there. As long as there's production. Are you here? You are not here. That is where you should understand where the Bible said, Jesus said, he that is joined to a harlot is one body. God said it long before science came to find out if it is true. Amen? amen. Your amen is not good at all. Amen. I said your amen is not good at all. Amen. Look at somebody and say, in this life, whose DNA do you have? The quickest way to pick a DNA is to observe people and listen to them and obey them. Whoever you obey, you pick their DNA. Show me who you listen to often 
and you do what they ask you to do and I know you are becoming that which you obey. Well, I'll prove it with scriptures very soon. Hello? You are not here at all. Hello? I didn't hear you. Hello? Look at whose DNA do you have? You can watch horror movie till you feel there's a demon in your room. Is it true or is it not true? You can watch porn until the porn comes to your room. The woman you were watching now arrives in your room and in the dream it is there. You hold the pillow, it feels like that's the person you are holding. You can watch a movie so much that very soon you see yourself acting the movie in the dream with the movies you are watching. I know someone who watched a movie, watched part one, part two, was waiting for part three. Part three was never coming until the person had a dream that the part three has come on Netflix. And he has watched some. And when the person went to watch the movie on Netflix, what the person watched was on Netflix. She has become part of how they produced it. She, she was not there. You think I mean John 5 19 will tell you, yeah, whatever I see my father do, that's what I do. Your spirit, you see, we are just a body. Your spirit can go anywhere and come. You pick the wrong DNA, it will stick with you for a long time until you are ready to change your DNA. Look at someone say, So now who is your source? So when you realize that your foundation is not good. One of the first things to do is to change your foundation. So in this my book, I said that the Bible says, if the found, um, Psalm 11, if the foundation be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? If your foundation is no good, wrong foundation can destroy the future of your tree. Listen, I, I, I heard a man of God preaching something and I was so impressed with what the man of God preached. You know what the man of God said? He said, you go to a nice church, build a nice hotel, right? You get there, you take pictures, of the place. It takes, how many of you have been taking pictures in this auditorium? God bless you. How many of you have gone to the foundation to take pictures? It is nasty. You will never want to take, I have pictures of the foundation. It is nasty. It is nowhere near where you want to take pictures from. But it's the foundation that is the reason for where you are now. Are you understanding me? So, if Satan sees that he, you, you, you can dream, I want to be this, I want to be that, I want to be this, I want to be that. Satan has a problem with that. All Satan needs to do with you is that give you a wrong DNA. Give you a wrong foundation. And you copy the foundation and don't tell me that, yes, I'm born again and it will work naturally. Peter worked with Jesus for three and a half years. Right? He comes from the tribe of Simon. And if you read Genesis chapter 49, his father, great, great, great father Jacob, said, Simon, your anger, because of your anger, you took a sword to attack our neighbors. Your anger will destroy you with a sword. I mean, they can take me to Genesis 49. Yes, later. When Jesus was with him, and I even told him that we are going to go down the set and get thee behind me, read. Cares be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Give me the verse preceding this right. You know that we are talking about who? Simon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their inhabitations. This guy was with Jesus in the Garden of Gemini. He said, instrument of credit is in the habitation. Had a knife in his pocket, even after so many years, thousands of years. Jacob is dead. His grandfather, Levi, is dead. We had a knife to cut here. It is what? It is in DNA. Abraham married fair lady. Struggled to give birth. He lied that my wife is my sister. Isaac was not born. Isaac came, married fair lady, couldn't give birth. Jacob saw fair lady, said, I want to marry. They swerve him. 
He married black lady. The following day she was pregnant. Married fair lady. So your DNA is the reason for your frustration. <laughs> it's not true. Judah went to sleep with his own daughter, his own son's wife. The lady pretended to be a prostitute and slept with him. It was an abomination. All the tribe of Judah, they have one thing in with them. Jesus came from there. Emma, they love women. Can I preach on? I know this one will be a topic very soon. Is Jesus from the tribe of Judah? Okay, let's talk. I'm talking about DNA. David couldn't joke with women that stand there. When he was dying, they had to bring her a young virgin for him to hold throughout the night to keep warm so that he will live long. His son Jacob, after observation, married how many women? Help me. You help me. I've forgotten. I know it's the fair Kings 11, dear Bayanko. Let's go on. Jesus was from the tribe of Judah, right? When he was supposed to go quickly to heaven and present himself to God, he saw Mary crying. He quickly ran to Mary and said, Mary, don't touch me. I'm going to God. When I come, we will continue on the talking. Jesus only controlled it. Jesus in your feet. I'm not talking to somebody here at all. So now the question is, how then do I move from a particular DNA? Because that is where fatherhood is very, very, very important. Because you would definitely end up being like your father. Jesus was not directly from the tribe of Judah, but was engrafted to the tribe of Judah by stepfather. Even then, Opeki DNA Nikakra. You see, are you with me here? Oh, am I teaching well at all? Have you seen anybody in the Bible that the woman came to pour oil on their feet and use the head to clean and kiss their feet before? It's only Jesus. One of my sons will say, it's in the blood. So if you don't like it, what you do is that, let me tell you this, I've realized that all successful people have the same character. All middle class people have the same character. It will shock you. And all poor people have the same character. Let me give you, all poor people watch TV. They like telling novellas. Oh, I lie to you. All poor people, they can sit on TV the whole day. They can watch phone. All poor people. And I've come here, all rich people, you know why most rich people had obese? They don't have time to eat. They, they are going to the office, they are carrying food because time is against them. They are driving, they are eating. They are at home working, they are on their PC. A poor man will sit down. Take time. It's not true. I say it's not true. <laughs> Be comfortable and eat the food. When you finish, stretch the leg. And will last for 30 minutes. I think it's not true. Before looking at this one, he said that it's like nobody will come to work today. He has already designed that he, no customers will come. He, he has already told him. It's not true. A rich man is waiting. No customer is coming. Will pick up his phone. Ah, is your show finished? So oh, we bought some last week. Ah, by now. But I don't know anybody who needs soap. I just got some new brand. I think that one. But I bought some that one that you bought last week. This new one is a little bit perfumed. If you add it, your wash will be. You try it. Come and buy it. He's pulling the customer. You there, you are sleeping in the house. Which DNA did you pick? 
I think I'm not preaching well here. <laughs> I don't want to elaborate this area too much because it will change my subject of DNA sonship. So when Jesus came on earth, he was very careful who he called his son. Because Jesus, Jesus Hebrews chapter 8 said that um, even though he was God, he was a son, he learned obedience through the things he suffered. Let me tell you this. If you want to become like somebody, you can never become like somebody without engaging in the suffering the person went through. Because if you don't go through what the person went through, you cannot become what he became. You'll be there and say that, like Friday I was teaching um, church workers, you be there and say that, eh, Jesus, as long as I'm with you, you don't need to fast. They will bring you epileptic, you can't heal. And Jesus will tell you that this kind does not go except by praying and fasting. I'm here, but you must fast. Though he were a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. It is believed that, especially in the U.S., most people who ended up winning the lottery, super bet, and became a millionaire overnight, by five years they were poor. They became poor again. Why? Because they did not have the structures in their system to be able to maintain that which they got. You are quiet. Oh, this is not Father's Day message. It's not Father's Day. You will get it very soon as Father's Day. So, Jesus, even as the Son of God, came on earth to go to even the stages that will qualify him to be a son. These days, everybody comes and, especially, we are in a generation which everybody is. They call everybody, Papa, Papa. You see, man, I'm going to be a Papa, Papa. Do you know the DNA of that person you are calling Papa? One day, one of my daughters who works at the airport met a powerful man of God. And everybody knelt down when he got to the airport and he was laying hands on all of them. And she didn't bow. She, she stood somewhere. So the man of God I said, where do you go to church? He said, bridge ministry. So your father, every year. He said, he has taught you well. <laughs> what about the people who are kneeling down? He said, he has taught you well. But I'm a genuine man of God. You can ask him about me. So she called me and said, this person is praying for you. I said, oh yeah, he cannot live. But why did the man of God say he has taught you well? Because Paul told him to lay hands sadly on no man. Many people have got impartations here. Eh? Because anybody you call your papa, you are saying that what is on his head must come upon your life. His God must be your God. You are quiet. And you will say, I want to be your son. I want to be your daughter. Daddy, please, can you? <laughs> and I tell people that, listen, sonship or daughtership, if there's a word like that, doesn't come by titleship. Can I teach? Because we are in a year of dominion, and please, if you don't get it, get my book. Is there? I mentioned that. If you don't want to read that page, go chapter. I said chapter what? I know it's page two four five to two six five. And by next month, the price is going high because of e levy and dollar. <laughs> we have to do new printing, so let me go on. <laughs> okay, read. Lay hands suddenly on. Neither be a partaker of the man saying, keep thyself pure. So a lot of people have gotten some impartations here. You've been watching some particular people on YouTube, right? 
Facebook, you are watching. Charlie, I they admire. You see that you're behaving like that. But you are in church, you are dancing like Rhina. It's not true. Or is it true? It's not true. It is entering you coming. You've not met the person yet. But by just observation and listening, you, are, you want to dress like... Even though you dress to go to church, your dress looks like those people. I think I'm not preaching here. Can I shoot? So, what then do you do? How then do you move and pick a DNA to become the son of a person? Like the Bible will say we should do. Look at somebody and say, are you a son? What the person say? Do you, look at somebody, do you have a father? And is the father your source? What the person say? Let me teach you this. Genesis 25, 5 to 6, before I start moving to the stages. I will get to my central scripture, don't worry. Can I teach? It's Father's Day. Give me time, man. Let me talk. I hope first service went well. Good. Let me continue. Now, listen to me carefully here. Genesis 25. It will shock you that 5 to 6. When Abraham was ready to die, eh? read, Abraham gave all that he had to who? All that he had to who? Now, verse 6. <laughs> but unto the sons of his concubines, which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts. It's only sons and daughters that get the grace and the oil. Other people only get gifts. And he sent them away from Isaac, his son. Why he yet lived? Why did he send them away? Because if they hang around him, they will fight him. They will be jealous of the band. But the truth is that of all the children he had, none of them were able to fulfill these five stages I'm going to talk of like he did. Let me tell you something here before I move on. Anybody who says somebody is his father and cannot be proud to put the person up on Father's Day, you are a liar. The person is not your father. If you call your father in public, this is my uncle. You are shy of him. You are embarrassed of him. You can't introduce him because what? I had a story where a young girl grew up to find out that his mother, her mother was blind. I don't know how that happened. That was blind. And this girl was very embarrassed to introduce the mother to people because she couldn't see. Then one day, the story was told the lady that, you know why you can see? When you were young, something happened and all your eyes went off. Your mother sacrificed the eyes and they did an operation and they gave it to you so that you can see and she will go blind. You are seen because somebody has given up something for you to become better. Some of you, all your mother needed to do was to take a pill. You'll not be here ranting. Did you hear me? A pill. Mm -hmm. Finito. You come and pass like water. Now you can open your mouth and insult. Your mother's stomach is big because you came there. You were too big. Her breast is sucking because you didn't take time to drink it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Her stomach is wrinkled 
because so that you, your flesh will be fresh. Can we give the Lord a mighty clap offering for our parents? You look at your mother and father and say that so you couldn't back at that teeth, only black and white. You to this age, you still have hands back on your room. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to grow. You, you take three eggs. Your parents talk. Ah, when I grow, I'll buy one crate. Now you, you, you even the egg, you will cook and you divide it into four. You were asking, Mommy, that don't mean to come out for you. Everybody, home. in your day, see how expensive it is. Let me tell you this if you are not happy with the first thing you should know, even before you pick up a new DNA, if you don't like your DNA, you must appreciate the DNA, love the DNA that has been able to give you life. Because if not for life, you can never move on to the next level. If you didn't have life, you would not have university. Oh, you didn't hear me. If you didn't have life, you would not have a job. Please, I know, are you hearing me? Can you give the Lord a mighty clap of faith and appreciate your parents? <laughs> Jacob is limping because he fought an angel for us to call the whole of Israel not Abraham, but after Jacob. And I'm sure his children will wonder, Papa, you are limping. It's the limping that has given us a name that we call all of Israel, even though Abraham was the father of Israel. It is named after Jacob because he fought a battle that gave the family a name. Sometimes when I look at church and I see people who have to sweep and they are, they are lazy, I laugh. We should have some speaker. One is bigger than these three put together. And it can take only six people to carry. And we used to carry it. Master, we carry it in and to and fro. From Accra to Ebri and we were carrying it. Today, it's easy. Very soon when you put in the AC and everything, you just come and full clear. And even then, people will still complain. But some people have suffered to make it easier for others to enjoy today. I like the way you are quiet. This is the time to write the message you will send to your father today. <laughs> this is the time to write it. Because I'm sure your brain is looking at the sacrifices. Some of them didn't go to school. Not because at their age they couldn't go to school. So that they would take you to the best nursery. That land that they could have built their dream house on is what they sold to take you and your siblings to school. That's why they are still renting. You are quiet. Praise the Lord. I'm not saying the truth. Let me tell you, I've seen people who have gifts that take them nowhere. Abraham gave gifts to, his, to other people who are around him, who have said faithfully, take this, take that. Thing. But when it came to Isaac, it's not just gifts. He gave all, anything he needed. The information, 
the technology, the brain, the know-how, the God he served. How? That's why we still value Isaac. Let's move on. The first stage you need, the first stage, and please, from this stage, everything I'm saying is in this book. The first stage you need in choosing somebody you call a father is you must be, it must be somebody you personally believe in. You believe the person. The first, that's the first stage, the foundation. Do you believe? You can't tell somebody who has made it in ministry, in finance, in technology, that I want you to mentor me. And you don't believe the person. Because if the, most of the things they say, it will blow your mind. You think they are liars. I, I was teaching yesterday for the Levites, and I said I read three books in the night. When we were going, one of the ministers asked me, Daddy, how did you do it? And I taught him. Three books in the night. Don't come and ask me, how am I not teach you? He said, Daddy, you didn't sleep. I said, I slept. He said, how do you sleep? He asked another nice question. I said, I never preach without sleeping. No matter how long I st spend studying and praying, I will sleep before preaching because if I don't, I will say nonsense. So I said the best way to sleep is to sleep at least one hour or two hours. You will get your energy back. You can do everything you want to do. No matter how tired you are, don't work tired. That's a key for somebody here. I said don't do it. Don't work tired. It is more expensive to work tired. The damage you will do to yourself and what you are doing is high. I've not had an accident before. The first accident I had, my car hit a cab, and the truth was that it was because I was tired. And the truth is, I knew I was tired. How did I know? I was supposed to preach in, at radio station at Sempa, and I said, I'm too tired, so I'm going home. And I drove home, and I missed, I hit a cab. I was too tired. But you know the interesting thing? Most of you sleep because you are sleepy. Menikum. If you sleep because you are sleepy, you will be a lazy buffoon who will not succeed. I sleep because I need energy to take me to my next level. Because as for sleep, some people were born to sleep. True or false? Ah, people can stand and sleep. I know some that they are here. They are standing by their sleep. They can be talking to you, but they are asleep. I know people who have to intentionally put off everything in their room, including windows, darkness, so that they can sleep by force, because they can't sleep. Let's move on. John 1, 47, 8, 9. The first stage you need. So Jesus didn't call anybody a son until the person believes in him. Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him. Can you adjust this TV well? To him. And Jesus saw Nathaniel coming towards him. And said to him, Behold, an Israel indeed in whom is no deceit. Nathaniel said to him, How do you know me? Jesus said to him, before Philip called you where you were, under the fig tree, I saw you. 49. Nathanael said, answered and said, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Then the next verse, Jesus answered and said to him, because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe? You will see greater things than this. So now here, do you believe? You will see greater things than this. Believe him gives you access, but believe him doesn't give you a DNA.
This is how the, the disciples were introduced. They believed. Can I tell you something? Satan also believes, but doesn't confess it. The book of James says that the devil believes in Jesus. He believes it. He believes. So believing is not enough. Read. You believe there is one God. You do well. Even demons believe and tremble. So when you believe, it's nothing. So for them, I believe this person. That is not enough. Believing is not enough. Do you know that there are people in this church who say I'm their father, but they can never be bold enough to put me on their social media. They will never do it. They will share other pastors, other preachers, other things. They will never share here because they are embarrassed at my level. If I put chandelier and air conditioning here, then they will proud and say, this is my church. If you can't love somebody at the stage the person is in, how can you then show love? Hey, are you here? You've gone home. Look at said, do you believe? So believing doesn't make you saved. But the Bible said, with your heart you believe, but with your mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10. So when you believe something and you say it to people, do you know how I know you don't believe this church is powerful? You don't bring anybody to church. If you believe, you tell people about the church. Oh, let me give you a if right now MTN sends you or this people send you that start this this thing, if you did they'll give you hundred a year friends, hey, CDs or your momo, you take your phone and call your friends. Have you tried your own? <laughs> Have you tried? How many of you do that? You call your friends. How is it true? It's not true. You call your friends. Why would you do it? Because the one that when you did it, you believed. That's why you were able to tell others about it. But when you can't tell others about it, it's a sign that you don't believe it. So Satan will never tell you to serve God because he, he believes it, but he will never do it because their belief is questionable. I think I'm not preaching here. Oh, are you here? You've gone home. Look at Are you a believer? Okay. So John 1 12. I saw an angel just move this way. I don't know why. Let's go. John 1 12. As many as received him, to them he gave the right to become what? Give me original King James because this put a wrote children. Original King just give the right heels, the right word for it. Okay. As many as what? Received them he gave power to become something. To them that believe what? On his name. So you just don't, you can't jump to sonship without first being a believer. So you are not the son of God. Say, me, I'm a Christian. I'm a son of God. Stop your being. You're a believer. Sons of God cast out devils. Everything that Jesus did on earth, you will do. This, listen. The same ingredient they use to do Fanta and Coca-Cola is the same ingredient they bring to Ghana. And we bottle it and it's the same Coca-Cola we have. KFC in America is KFC here. Because the same way they do it, the same way we do it here. Is it true? Oh, is it true? The same colors, the same building. If you change the color or the logo, it is not. It's a, it's a DNA. It's a franchise. You, I think I'm not preaching here at all. So there's no way you are the son of God and witches are chasing you in a dream. And you are looking, pastor, pastor, and guess what? The demons came again. Wait a minute. You are running away from a demon? You are still a child. You are a believer. You are not yet a son. Do you think none of those children will be there and police will stop the person and say yes? What's your problem? You cross the line. So? If you do rough, they just pick a phone. Well, got straight. <laughs> Let's move on. Look at some say believe. Now, after you believe, then you move to the next stage, which is to become a disciple. People, 
People just get up. Let me, let me, let me join the church. Let me go to the disciples. Let me. No, you can't go to the discipleship in the church until you have believed in the system of the church. And so also, you can't call somebody your father until, how are you, my friend Rasta? You know what Rasta said? Let me tell all of you. Rasta said, he's been telling people to come to church, but he said he would never come. You know why? He said, if he comes, I'll change him. So he does. <laughs> he, said, he said, all his friends that he told them to come to church, they have changed. And I like it when the area said that this church, if you go, you will change. <laughs> Rasta, yes, sir. I said, our best is to remember cry today is in church. <laughs> he, he tells people, he tells everybody that that church, if you go, if you want change, go here. You want to go to change, change go here. Today I'm sure he wants to change. Let's, <laughs> Let's go on. So John 8:30. Look at how say you must graduate from a believer. You see, if you believe something, you start being disciplined to what you believe in. That's what we call discipleship. You start being disciplined to what you believe in. You don't believe in something and discipline yourself to nothing. Okay, I want to be a footballer. And every morning I'm reading the Bible. Please, I'll be a pastor. Is it true or is it not true? I'll be a pastor. Because I've not disciplined myself. Okay, let's read. And he spoke to this words, many believed on him. Let's read, go. And he spoke this words, many believed on him. Then look at verse 31. I said, believe the faith. And Jesus said to those Jews who believe on me, if you continue in my word, then ye are my disciples. He says, process. And he said, disciples indeed. It is if you hear the word, hearing it made you believe. But doing it and continuously doing it makes you a disciple. You want to slim. And they say, no, Cabo. So chew leaves. So now I'm a vegetarian. Then you go behind the scenes. You eat watch eh? Kenke Banku Banku six balls. Kenke five balls. Say Kenke it's not too expensive. Then you come when you come to the table, then you say, Media, I don't like food though. Then you chew the leaves. All of us after a matter of time, say, ah, why is it that you are doing what we do? but you are not becoming what we want you to become. It is likely you are doing something we don't know because we expect a certain result at this time. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's not true. <laughs> this is said to do, do, if you believe, it's just one stage. Look, there are things in the Bible. So please, that spiritual father thing everybody is talking about, be careful you call your spiritual father. Do you believe? Number two, are you ready to continue in the teachings of the person? And someone say, eh, we're teaching. It's the same Bible. It's not true. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all walk with Jesus. There are things Luke wrote about the prodigal son. None of the other three wrote. Obia Tron, your pair. According to what they wanted to write, they wrote it. Mark wrote more on Jesus the man, the natural nature of Jesus. John wrote on the deity, his sonship. Nobody wrote the words of Jesus than John. Look like the stories. Matthew concentrated more on his suffering. Look at someone say, whose disciple are you? I didn't hear you. He said, you are my disciple. If you do what? 
you continue. Do you know, sometimes somebody can follow a person for one year. After one year, they stop following. And they expect the person to be at the same level. The person is gone. Let me, let me confess something to you. One person I follow a lot is Bishop T.D. Jakes. And during the lockdown time, I moved away from following. And I was going through so many things. And one day, who is that? Is it somebody in church? Is it Samuel Dente? Yes, Samuel Dente. Looked at me and said, Daddy, these days you don't let us watch Bishop T.D. Jakes' videos. And I said, oh, it's one of those things. I think I'll watch it. So I decided to go and watch it again. I realized that some of the things I'm going through, the man has been preaching it. <laughs> and I was not picking it. So I had to go back to his 20s, 18, 19, and listen and listen and listen. I realized, ah, I would have gone out of these things with a speed of light instead of thinking and thinking and thinking because someone has already taught and prevailed and is giving the answers. When you are tired, you tell me to end. Because we are in 9.2. It's left with three more points. Look at him and say, I must continue. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. Yeah, you must continue. The funny thing is when people assume that because they are around, they know. It doesn't happen like that. A woman touched Jesus and Peter didn't know. He was around. Hello? I didn't hear you. Look at Are you continuing in the word? The funny thing is when somebody says you are a father. You are telling the person something and say, but I listen to this other man of God and this other man of God and this other, and they say, and you say, okay, that's what he says, but, hey, but that one is right. If that one is right, what are you doing here? The funny thing is somebody comes to me and say, somebody came to me, a lady, his, his pastor sent her. It was a pastor, he was a pastor's wife. She was a pastor's wife. That the wife has a fiber. I should pray for the wife. So the, the woman came and I was like, let's pray. So we prayed and I said, I touch her. And I said, you are healed. Check it. So pastor, I'm not healed though. I'm not healed. I said, why? He said, me, when they pray for me, I fall down. And I roll like a snake. And I shout and I say, Minko, 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 you just touch me. He said, I should check. I'm not healed. I said, we are done. Go home. I called the husband. I said, please, I can't help this product. You know what? You want your formula to work in my formula. Look, if you beat many churches, if you come to be sure that my formula, you hardly can tell you going fast. No, no, no. The, the worst I will tell you, pray this prayer and go on and live this life. Stop this and do this. Stop that and go here. I will give you the direction that will change your life. And I will not let you bring me soup. Bring me back your friend. Bring me what? Salt. Bring me. Bring me. Yeah, bring that and bring that. Bring this. Bring that. I know people, he's here, one of them is here. Who used to drink, do all those things, he's here. Did he, was working and was having, he just sat in his car every morning listening to my preaching, in and out going to work. He built a house. Just listening. His parents were angry, shouting, talking. When will you stop drinking? When will you stop drinking? They've said everything from childhood. That guy will not stop drinking. All of a sudden, he doesn't want you to drink again. Nobody prayed for him. Nobody listened because there is a path you pass. And there's a path you part. There's a road. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mind. You shall meditate therein day and night. You shall make, 
I don't, you don't, you don't necessarily have to pray for, Lord, make a way for me. The first thing you have to do is change your mindset by the information you put in your head. If you put the right information in your head, the path will change. Somebody told me that, Daddy, 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 everybody's troubling me. That I, I'm not getting married, I'm growing. I said, Wait, are you sure if I tell you to marry tomorrow, you marry? I said, ah, I'll marry, I can marry. So what's your problem? The only thing is that now you are still single because of where you want to go in life. You realize that you've not yet built yourself in that capacity to get there. That's why we are holding on. Marriage is not the issue. If it is marriage, you can marry tomorrow morning. Oh, is it true? It's not true. Oh, please, is it true? It's not true. Sometimes you marry and you decide that due to lifestyle, you will hold on to three years or four years before you give birth. People will come, hey, give birth to, give birth to. Is it by force? You want to make sure that you have saved enough money to take your children to the best of school. So you are planning your life. Sometimes we allow people who don't believe in what we believe to make decisions for us. I think I'm not preaching to somebody here at all. Look at somebody. We have a bus. Look at We have a bus. We want to prosper. We want to make it in life. And make it to heaven. So that when God destroys the earth, we will not be affected. After, we will come back to dwell on earth. Yeah, that is the kind of church you are in. Look, anybody who tells you, and I'm telling you, that Jesus Christ came to take us to heaven, tell the person that me, I say he's a liar. When he taught us to pray, say, pray your kingdom and bring heaven to earth. What did he say? I, let's be our father, we'll go there. Who art in heaven? Hallowed be your the kingdom. Come. Your will be done on as it is in the only reason why we'll go to heaven is because the earth will be destroyed. And so we don't have a place here to stay. So we'll go and wait. When the, he finished destroying the earth, they will come back and dwell. If you wanted Adam to stay in heaven, you would not have put him on earth. I'm not preaching with a crowd. Look at something. I want to go to heaven. Yeah, I didn't say you know we don't want to go to heaven. But until then, you must you must enjoy the earth. Can I hear an amen? amen. Oh, amen. amen. Do you know something about discipleship? This listen, if you look at the Bible very well, Jesus taught, preached. He taught the parable of the sower, the parable of the good Samaritan. He taught all kinds of parables to the church like this, who were believers. If you are not a believer, you'll not be here. But after, the disciples came and said, teacher, what is the meaning of the word or the seed that fell on the ground? They said, the one on the rocky ground. It's not ground though. They think it's ground I'm talking about. It is when she had had that don't believe anything. I said, ah. Oh. Disciples go beyond teaching in church. After church, they see, they make time to go to their father say, can I have better explanation to what you taught? The other one, that's not they finish, they pick their Bible. Oh, oh, preachy power. Oh. <laughs> and that's why you come apart, then they go home. But a disciple doesn't do that. A disciple wants better explanation, deeper input to what? And Jesus said, You see, I said it's a seed. It's not a seed, though. The seed is the word of God. So, ah. Now, the Bible is this the seed is the word of God. I thought it was a corn. <laughs> it wasn't corn I was talking about, it's a parable. Is the word of God and how it feels. So, ah, okay, 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 okay. So the disciple goes beyond Sunday teaching to seek better understanding, ask questions, has more input to know how to do it. Because don't assume you understood the preaching. I think I'll give the last one. Then you have to go and read the book to get the rest. I don't know if you don't have a copy of the book. Oh. You are translating. 
I hear you are translating to Spanish and French. Oh, is the other ones you are doing? Not this one. Hurry up and get one. Look at somebody and say, are you a disciple? A believer? Believers get miracles. But sons make miracles happen. Can we go to the third stage? From a disciple, then they move to a servant. They want to serve. You, you will become what you serve. You become what you serve. You become what you are. You become what you are. You become what you. You become what you. And you become what you. Good. Yesterday they were arranging the chairs here. When they finished, I called them. Put this thing here. Put this thing here. And I'm sure they were like, what is he doing? I came to explain. But what I was doing, one person would have easily understood it was Pastor Dave because he has seen me do it years ago. Those of you who see people sitting there, you think there's a new thing he has brought. Ask my wife, those who have been with me for long, it is just a system being brought back again. Somebody stopped it and I brought it back. It has been like that. That's how it should have been. Anything you serve, you become. Go and serve in the palace. You will talk like a king. Is it true or is it not true? Let's read the Bible. John 8, we read 31. Let's start. Yeah, please hurry up. Then said the Jews, if you believe in him, you should condemn my word. Then are you my disciples? 32. You know 32 very well. And he shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, hear me. This is where the person starts getting deliverance. Without hands being laid upon. Without demons being cast out. Naturally, demons naturally begin to flee. There's a lifestyle you live. You will not have malaria. Is it true or is it not true? There's a lifestyle you live. You won't have malaria. They say, last time you live, you don't have Corilla. So you live a certain life, all of a sudden, certain demons that naturally come against people, it doesn't come to you. Why? Because you live a different lifestyle. You are picking a particular DNA. So said, the truth shall, um, shall make you free. Now, 33, quickly, we are in 35. Then answered him, we, then they answered him, we be Abraham's seed. You see that, you know, we are Christians. We go to church, we are born again. And when never in bondage to any man, how says that you shall be made free? 34. Jesus answered them very well, I said, Whoever commits sin is a servant of sin. What you commit to, you serve. 35. Thank you. And the servant abided not in the house forever, but the son abided. So now, he's trying to tell you that, listen, you must graduate from what? Being a disciple to serving. Let me teach you something. How many of you want to be rich? Anybody who is rich commands money. Money doesn't command him. Poor people, money commands them. As soon as money gets into your pocket, <laughs> you don't have this. I you got it, you have to do this. You have to do this. And before you know, you've wasted the money. Rich people, when they get their money, they tell their money, I want to use you for this. Money is like fire. You must control fire to let fire serve you. It's fire, if you serve fire, it will kill you. That's how money is. Am I teaching something here? If I tell you that for three, four weeks, the only money I had on me was 15 Ghana cities, you never believe it. And when I told Pastor Tony, it was a mistake. He collected five cities. He didn't have mercy on me. He collected five cities. 
And, but you are working. Every week we work. Every day we work here. So, oh, we work. The fact that there is money doesn't mean that I'm... It's not mine. It's changed. The, I need money, yes. But the money must not control me. Now, some of you, as soon as you get money, everything will call you. Say, I'm going to be a check. Sunday with us, I'm dressing here. My dress here, here, check. Now, if the money had not come, will you think like that? You see, money has a voice and money talks. Is it true or is it not true? Ask my wife. I used to be so funny with money. I'll go to a place, I see things I buy. I used to get to a place, I'll go and buy it. Till date, I'm not going to collect that thing. I, my wife said, you won't buy it. Leave it. I said, I'll buy it. I pay for that thing. I go home. The friend, I realize I don't need it. I go there, money is not refundable. I don't need that thing. So you know what I do? I don't keep money on me. So when I see that thing and I like, I go home, I sleep by money. I don't need it. I say, ah, okay, I don't need it. How many of you are, are, are hear what I'm saying? I'm that type, if I have money on me, please, or take, I'll, I'll share my money so I don't keep money on me. When you ask me, I don't have. It's true. You check my pocket, I don't have. <laughs> Can I teach you? I trust I, do you know how best to make people stop worrying for money? Coins. Keep coins. When people ask you, I've taught you this, this is in one of my books, Harvest. When people ask you for money and give them paper, can you give me 50? You give 50. They think you have more. Next time they will come for 100. So if, when they ask, get coins. Let them count 20 pesos. <laughs> By the time they get to 20 cities, they will understand that getting money is not easy. I told you that story. Somebody came here with iPhone and earpiece in the ear and was telling Richard them that he's hungry. We should give him food. And Richard was giving money. I said, Richard, stop. I said, young man, go and sell the earpiece and buy food. He said, nobody will buy. I said, I will buy. Bring it. He said, I won't sell. You, you want earpiece in your ear? You want food? Ah! Are you crazy? Not that the phone. I didn't say the phone. At least without the earpiece, the phone will work. Just say, what but life with the earpiece? I should also say, come on down. Come on down here. Are you, are you here going somewhere else? I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you. Is it a good teaching? Yeah. This is the DNA I'm talking about. This is a lifestyle. You do it. You ward off unnecessary people. If I try the coin thing, it will shock you. Don't come again. Let them count 200 cities, coins. Three hours, if not finished counting. And I have, I have coins, me, I have coins. The one bodybuilders, that box, that this thing, that rubber plastic, I have like six. When we do this, I will give you count. They don't want to work. They don't want to do anything. They feel money is lying somewhere. They can just come and then you just don't go for them. Counting money credit, they, they tell you that I can't count. You can't count, but you can't chop. Oh, amen. amen. So if you don't know what to do with coins, save it and put it down. Where did I learn this thing from? I learned it from my father or my God, Jesus. After he fed the 5,000, he said, gather up the fragment. It was store basket full. That's what Jesus did. Gather up the fragment. The coins, keep it there. It's, it is useful. Do you know that people do keep a change more? Middle income people. Keep the change. 50 cities. Have you seen rich people before? When they buy things, they collect their change. And you poor people say, now, what is he doing with all this money? still collecting their money. Yes, they collect their money. They learned it from Jesus. Poor people, they, they just, that, you are teaching people the, irre the irrelevance of work. Some people have calculated you every month. They know you've earned salary. They are coming. They use you for their budget. They go here 20 years, 20 years, 20 years, 20 years, 20 years. They have 2,000 Ghana. They didn't work. If you go to their house, come and see the food they are eating. You will never dream. 
They fry four eggs with sardine inside. And buy Coke, the big bottle. And they sit down. And that is breakfast. You know why in your house you have fried one egg? And the next time you eat egg again is four days later. Am I talking to somebody here? Look at yourself. Self. Say self. self. Let me tell you this. Pastor David has stayed with me. Pastor Victor has stayed with me. One of the things, one day, Pastor Victor's wife was telling me that, ah, it looks like Pastor Victor has learned a lot of things from you. I said, I don't understand. He, said, ah, he doesn't like bread that is cut. I said, eh? He said, you too. I said, yes. He lent it from me. Me, if I send you to buy bread, it's better be whole. If they cut, I don't like. Are you here with me? Are you, are you here with me? If you are buying rice, you must buy one bag. You don't buy sardine. <laughs> my, my drink, tense. You buy oil and rubber and you tie it. Because you're crying. Are you crazy? You go and buy palm oil, your pa, or, or fry it all. Then they'll boo it for you like that. That's how poor people live. It will shock you. Buy the full bottle. Half bottle. It will stay longer than buying small small. Are you with me or you are not with me? Uh, are you with me? Your face has jimmied. Because you buy it. No, papa, wakotong kwain. Ne gurabe mna oko. Are you crazy? Papa, wajina mame kwain. Five cities. Mame nam, wakotong kwain. You buy soup. A woman, you buy soup in a rubber. You are delivered in the name of Jesus. Amen. You can't be my daughter and have this DNA. I will discipline you. Oh, are, you, are you with me here? There are some things you can never learn. You can only learn by serving in association. Go and buy me this. Go and buy me that. Go and buy. When they sent some people to go and get me fruits. When they went, the person didn't ask details. Went and bought as I said the last time, when to buy apple, when they brought it, my first time I said, mm -hmm, Daddy will not take this. I said, ah. He said, You go and buy food. He said, You didn't get a detail. If you take apple in the night throughout the morning, apple is for morning, apple is not for evening. There, there are things you can only learn by seven. So you come and say, So only 15 can I say, How did you survive? Uh -huh. That is now that we are going to talk. Now I'm going to teach you how I survived on 15 can I see this? And I made a mistake and said it where I shouldn't say it, and I lost five. And I knew he was tempting me to see if I love him, trying to tell me that he too, he doesn't, me even I have 15, he doesn't have at all. So I said, You take five. You see, he's mentioned this. There's a good father. If I'm not giving to him today, you say I'm a bad father. I gave him five. And guess what? I gave him five. That evening, somebody placed 2,000 Ghana cities in my hands. That is one of the keys you learn by association. You don't spend your last money, you invest it. It comes by service. Your last money, you don't keep it on, you don't feed it on yourself, you sow it. When is your last you invested? You don't spend it. So, ah, ask my wife. She's here, I don't like you. The whole month, I've not given her allowance. When I went home that Friday, oh, I said, sweetheart, finally, the Lord has made a way. Let's keep the home moving. She said, if I'm lying, she'll tell you. My, for the first time, my daughter was saying, Daddy, I'm going to learn how to play piano. They said, to oh, charge 150 Ghana. I said, can they charge, take the money next week? The mother went to pay. I said, Rade, 
150, I don't have it. Meanwhile, I was paying bills for construction. That's not my money. Knowing what not to touch is something you also learn by association. Many of you, you have opened your own business. The way you chop the business money. You pay yourself as if you were the CEO, the general manager. The, you, you, then you come and say, Father God, the witch is a wizard. Don't are consuming my money. All the dwarfs, you are the Magajia dwarf. You are the main dwarf in the house. Can I, am I talking to somebody here too? Look at you myself. I didn't hear you must what? I didn't hear you must do what? I didn't hear you must do what? Yeah. Anything you want to become, serve it. So Jesus said, everybody who sin is a servant of sin. When you serve good people, you naturally become good. Oh, amen? Your amen is not good at all. One day, say one day. Today, this person who works in the, one of the biggest well-established restaurants in Ghana. And this morning, they brought me a powerful breakfast. One day, this same lady asked her to do tea for me. She took Milo for me. I said, Milo, she should do coffee for me. She took the small cup. Took Milo. The big spoon. Three. I said, Milo, then coffee. One, two. Two, three, like coffee, and poured hot water inside and gave it to me. Daddy, this is your coffee. I don't want to. said, What is this? He said, Daddy, I've, I'm done with the coffee. I said, This is not how you do coffee. Taste this one. She tasted it. I said, Now, this is, ah, this is nice. Today, she's managing a big place. It will shock you. If she had not served in the office, she would have gone to do coffee like that somewhere. And she'll be sacked. Some of you today, if they tell you to do coffee, I can promise you, we will run away. How many of you know how to do coffee? See, oh, yeah, more coffee maker. <laughs> there are a lot of things. Let me tell you. If, let me get, how many of you want to marry a rich man? Let me show you. You want to marry a rich man? Do you know how to use washing machine? Dishwasher. Do you know how to keep time? Rich people don't play with time. Huh? Poor people have time. That's why they watch TV. I'm telling you, my brother. <laughs> Look at the, what are you, who are you serving? I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. Let me tell you this. I used to have this tailor who used to sew my suit. Everybody has been with me for long, especially for 20 years and above know him. He's called Entei, Samuel Entei. This guy, if he has to sew for you the best, I've not seen anybody who sews suits like him. You have to be on here and buy him coke. If you buy him the coke, you'll be by him, he will sew it. If the coke is not part of the payment, he's lazy, but he's good. You know what? I, I had to monitor this guy and buy coke and sit with him. He got to a stage I knew how to cut suits. Because I should stay with him and he takes their chalk or something is marking you are watching. One of the people helping in construction is here. When they are doing construction, I am here. Like one day, if they are not, I was going to lay blocks. How, Pastor, how do you know how to lay blocks? I know because I've been watching them do it. You see, you can never be what you don't serve. If you want to know something, serve it. Do you know there are some people who are um, fashion designers, they finish school, they are still doing nonsense work. Instead of them going to look for those who know how to sew and say, I want to serve you for free for six months. No pay, no pay. It's not that they don't pay. They want to be perfected and know how the person is getting customers, which they will not teach you. You only learn by being close and observing. You will never do it. In your pride, you'll be a big boss in a small corner and you'll be making silly mistakes and very soon nobody will be coming to you. I know a lady who learned how to
in this church. And people stopped sewing with her. And she came to tell me that, man of God, nobody wants to sew with me. So I asked her, why? How to, why don't I say? He said, when I went to this lady to sew for me, I gave her material to sew my skirt to this anger. She had sewed it down. And when I asked her, I said, you are a Christian. You don't have to wear a short dress. Excuse me. Are you his pastor? Or are you his father? You are a designer. Someone has brought you dress to sew. Someone also came. Make it tight. He made it so loose. When I asked her, I said that a Christian doesn't wear tight dress. Then I sent her to go and stay, learn some more from mommy. She didn't last long because she didn't want to learn. Service is apprenticeship. What did I say? I didn't hear you. Service is what? Good. And one of the things you must learn to do is to serve your father. So you to pick that DNA because the things he teach are things you should be practicing. But it is difficult to practice what is taught without observing how they do it. Amen. Look at someone and say, are you serving? Look at who are you serving? I know who you are serving. Since you put messages on YouTube, you never watch one. But I've been watching other people's videos. Anytime you watch people's videos on YouTube, you are giving them money. But you will never watch Bridge Ministries. It's not true. I say it's not true. Oh, is it true? It's not true. Hey, are you here? So in the story of the prodigal son, he came to his father. And there are some, some sons like that. Give me what is mine, let me go. He collected and he left. But he didn't have the DNA. He went and he became wasteful. The word prodigality doesn't mean backslided. It means someone who wastes resources. Can we go on? When he came to his senses, the first thing he says is that, I will go to my father and I will ask him, make me as one of your servants. First, he had a give me mentality. You know what happens in most churches? Give me a uh, lay hands on me, pray for me. Uh, who better will you do this for me? Will you give me transport? Will you do me that? I repeat, anybody who gives to you is taking from you. Listen to me. Anybody who gives to you is taking from you. What does it? Anybody who does what? Is what? So somebody gives me seed. He said, you didn't say thank you. I said, take your seed. I should say thank you for giving me seed. You are giving me seed to become prosperous. You are taking from me. If I say thank you, it is nice. But it is better. It is more blessed to than to yeah. Am I teaching something here? So he told them, I'm going to make my father, go to my father and say, make me as a servant. Make me as a what? I didn't. Make me as one of the what? Make me as one of the what? I'm not going to learn how to play instruments. Start serving them, you play. That's the funny thing about life. They will send you, go and, go and do this. Go and do, go and buy this, go and buy this, go and go do this. Sit here, sit here. And hold this thing for me. When I'm playing this, play this for me. When I'm doing it, play this for me. Before you know you are doing it, it takes service to pick up the DNA. You must believe. You, become, you must become discipled. And then you serve. Then the next two, which you must go and read in the book is, then you become a friend. Then from friendship, you become a son. I don't have time to teach it. That is why you must go and get their book. Ah, you are not clapping well at all. In this book, I explain when you become a friend, they don't keep things from you. Secrets are known. Friends know secrets. Friends knows weakness. Friends knows everything about the mentor. 
they know their strength. It's in the Bible. Abraham was a friend of God. Jesus called his disciples my friends. You become a friend. And when you become a friend, you can say anything to the person. They don't become offended. Then you become a son. So look at somebody sitting by you and say, do you have a father? If the person said yes, ask the person, have, have you or do you serve the father? Look at somebody and say, have you been discipled? What the person say? Ask someone, are you a believer? So let me end on this. Abraham takes his son, takes two young men who are called servants. Please, are you listening to me? And when Abraham saw where he was going, he told the two servants, stay here. Servants cannot go far with you. Because Jesus said, that servants leave, sons don't go away. Sons want an inheritance. They want the anointing. They want the grace. They want the DNA. Are you with me? So Abraham told them here, sometimes I have people around me and I'll tell somebody else to get something for me. Why? They cannot be trusted to handle it. And they get offended by the truth. They can you handle? I was telling myself recently, most people around men of God can't handle the truth. Most people can't handle the truth. If, let me give an example. Who, who can I use? Let me use one. If I show you the weakness of this person, and you still see me around this person. Maybe you don't like this person because you can't handle the truth. But me, I'm still around the person. Because there's something I know which you don't know. Because let me tell you this. There's nobody who doesn't have a weakness. When yours has not come, we should be quiet. A man came to me and told me that he has stopped church. I'm sure he might be listening. Because his house is around. Because ladies come to church with short dress. And I said they will change. He said, uh-huh, they should change now. I said, wait, you, you come to church right from drinking at a spot here. And you smoke and you bring it. Come and sit by us and you are blowing fuse. We have not asked you to change. You are still coming. Why don't you change? He said, eh, kakra, kakra. Eh, kakra, kakra, your best son. Oh, so for kakra, kakra, your best son. I said, okay. Then people do, kakra, kakra. They will change. He doesn't understand it. As for him, his weakness should be accepted. But somebody's own should be condemned. But let me tell you this. No, look at someone and say, please, you are not perfect. Oh. Look at someone, if you are perfect, don't come to church. Sick people go to hospital. Healthy people stay at home. If you see anybody admitted in the hospital, or you Can we move on? Abraham asked the servant, stay here. I can't go with you to the next place. And took, took his son. He said, son, God has given me a vision. I want you to help me fulfill the vision. Why did you let the two other people go? Let me tell you, if you graduate from a believer, stop making believers your friend. They will drag you back. If you graduate to disciple, stop making those people your friend. They will drag you back. If you any new level you meet, you must go. Let me tell you, the problem of Samson was that Samson did not associate himself with the right people. When Delilah got to know the weakness, if it was somebody who understood Samson, he would not have revealed it elsewhere. Please, is somebody getting me here? Oh, you are quiet. Are you okay? Please, are you okay? Are you sure you're okay? So Abraham told his son, now that our servants have left and gone, I have, a, I have a thing to tell you. There is no goat and sheep. You are the one that's going to eat for sacrifice. If I made those two stay with me, 
it will be two against one. They will convince you against the sacrifice. So many of you, there are things you want to do for God. But when you go and talk to some people, they say, baby, it's not true. That's why you must be separated. Isaac says, so what does God want you to do? He said, God said, I should kill you. <laughs> Abraham, Isaac, eh? Me. Yeah. Sons die for their father. You didn't hear that. Sons die for? Sons do what? I didn't hear you. Sons die for? I didn't hear you. Sons die for? And in this, I gave 30 things son does for their father. And 30 things sons, fathers do for their sons. Let's end on this. Our father, let's go. Who art in heaven? Number one, hallowed be your name. So that's the first one. Sons, hallow, reverent, honor their father. Next one, thy kingdom come. Father, what do you want to do? You want it to work. Three, your will be done on earth. Father, what is your will? Say it, it will be done. As it is. Then, Father, that's the following. Give us this day. Our fathers provide for their sons. Please, 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 everybody. I'm telling you this and quote me. That spiritual father thing that people say they do. Come and give him money to your father. It is not biblical. Fathers provide for their children. Children don't provide for fathers. It is when the children have grown enough, they have matured enough to take care of themselves. They say, Papa, you should take some. Oh, you are not here at all. When people come and say, I want to be your son or your daughter, one of the things I tell them, win souls and bring them to church. That is your qualification. By the time you get to 10, you'll be, you'll be a disciple by force. You have to learn. Give us that daily bread. Fathers forgive their children because children hurt their fathers most. If you are a father and you don't like to forgive, you are not a father. Fathers lead their children out of temptation. Guy now, I'm here careful. Lead now, this business will not succeed. This thing, do it this way. This thing, pass it this way. The way you are working, that's not how people work. Work this way. Fathers delivers his children from evil. Get the book and it will be of help to you. Can we please be on our feet? Oh, you are quiet, oh. Isaac lay down quietly and his father took a knife was about to kill him and God said Abraham now I know that you fear me now I can transfer the oil on you to your son Isaac because your son was ready to do what I wanted you to do you can't have the oil and you are ready to die. Do what your father wants to do. And let me tell you this. I don't have time. Like you know that when Timothy met Paul, Timothy was over 40 years. Timothy's father was a Greek and the Bible states it. Paul took Timothy and circumcised him. 40 year old man. And the, the, Paul took him and cut him to fit the ministry. Before he came, Timothy was a Christian. He was a believer. But when he came to Paul, Paul said, if I don't sacrifice you, we can't go to the Jews. Your ministry will be limited only to the Greeks. Timothy would have said, but there are people who, who he said they don't need circumcision. Why did you ask for me I need circumcision? You need circumcision. Because first Timothy 1, 2. Second Timothy 1, 2. You are my dear son. And you are my true son. And if I'm my dear son, you are my true son. I must circumcise you. I will cut you 
when nobody wants to cut you. Because I know where you must go. If I can't cut you, I can't take you there. Close your eyes with me. And ask God, God, give me a DNA that will take me to where you want to take me. To Timothy, a true son in the faith. Second Timothy 1, 2, 2, say to Timothy, a dear son. Okay, a beloved son. Then ask God, where do you want to cut me? Ask my father. God, where will you cut me? Which part of my flesh will you cut off? Is it my anger? Is it my pride? Is it my bitterness? Is this my wantonness? My decisions. If you don't want to be cut, oh Timothy, oh Joseph, if you don't want to be cut, oh Isaac, oh Ishmael, your mother must come back and serve Sarah because an instruction will come in the future so that you too will be cut and that will make you part of the covenant. Isaac, you must be cut. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. For raising sons. For raising fathers. Father, your, your last statement in your word in the Old Testament that you will reconcile the heart of the fathers to the sons and sons to the fathers. Today being Father's Day, Lord, as you have learned lessons on sonship and fatherhood let this grace mend homes mend lives mend the church make us whole and complete us in your will in jesus mighty name amen come and give the lord a mighty clap of you here